We're back, and I have great news. The Mayans were wrong. We're all still alive. Good deal. A few things have changed here, you might have noticed. We moved, so we have a different backdrop. I cut off all my hair, which is fun. I don't know, do you like it? And I had braces and then had them removed. It's been that long. Huh? 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 So I didn't want to jump right in. I don't want to waste any more time. This is our New Year's special and we are going to be featuring a very popular drink on New Year's Eve, champagne. All right, so we're gonna start with the classy stuff first. We have Pommery Champagne from the actual Champagne region of France. What is Champagne anyway? The only real difference between Champagne and sparkling wine is the region that it comes from. Champagne is the term used to describe the region in France, but most people use it as a generic term. In fact, in Europe, it has been illegal to call a sparkling wine that's not from Champagne, Champagne, since 1891. I couldn't really find out too much about this Champagne online because their website is in French and I couldn't get it to translate. So I guess we'll find out all we need to know from tasting it. So let's get started. I'm gonna actually open it. like old. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Woo! Cheers. When you're pouring champagne, you wanna tilt the glass so that you preserve the bubbles, because that is the whole point of champagne or sparkling wine, the bubbles. So you can see the bubbles in the glass, but when you're really gonna experience the bubbles is in your mouth. So you wanna take it in and hold it in your mouth, swish it around and see if the bubbles intensify or if they go away. It's just part of the experience. They intensify. Oh. All right, when you first take it into your mouth, super bubbly, the effervescence gets like crazy. It's like a bubble fest in your mouth, right? And you can't really get too much of the flavor when it's being that effervescent. But once you swallow it and you get the aftertaste, it's really sweet and light. It tastes almost just like white grape juice with alcohol. Hmm. It sounds bad, but it's not bad. It almost has a little bit of a straw quality to it. It's in the color of it, but it also sort of has straw. I don't know what to tell you about that, but I'll be really honest with you. I don't know the difference between a really expensive champagne and a not really expensive champagne. Okay, you know what? As I sit here with it, it gets better and better with every sip. It's a lot more mild and less, it's got less of a bite than a, a less expensive wine and it also has a little bit more of like a green apple flavor. As you, as your mouth gets accustomed to the bubbles, more flavor comes out and I think that that's just natural. You're not used to drinking that super effervescent, you know, thing so it takes a while for subtle flavors to come out but I can tell a difference between it. <laughs> I reevaluate my earlier statement. It's good, it's good, it's totally worth it. All right, champagne number two is near and dear to my heart because it is from Wilson's Creek, which is actually in Temecula, and I went there earlier this year, and they're awesome. It's a beautiful vineyard, but they specialize in almond champagne. Now, I realize I'm still using the word champagne and this is from California and it says champagne on the label. So I have to let you know that there is a loophole with the champagne rule that I just told you about. The United States is immune. They didn't sign the Treaty of Versailles, <laughs> which made it illegal to use the word champagne if it wasn't from champagne. So Americans, Use it freely. You could call anything you want to champagne. We've gotten a little bit away from it as the years have gone on because some Californians think that their champagne is actually better. Their sparkling wine, excuse me, is actually better than the ones made in champagne. So they've kind of reverted back to calling it just sparkling wine. But this one is called champagne and it is from California, Temecula, and almond. 
they add a little almond flavor in here, so we're gonna give it a go. Also, this is bottled using um, the Charmat method, which is gonna be the way that they get carbon dioxide in there. It has a second fermentation where they add yeast and sugar to the champagne in a stainless steel barrel. The traditionalists in champagne do the second fermentation in the bottle. So in the stainless steel barrels before bottling, it's just a cheaper, easier, more mass-produced way of doing it. But it's better than injecting it with carbon dioxide, which is what other champagnes do. Yeah, I like it when it's loud. Technically, that is not the right way to open a bottle of champagne. In a restaurant, a fine dining setting, you're gonna have a towel over it and you're gonna gently pull it out and make as quiet of a noise as possible. But we're not in a fine dining restaurant. We're in my house and it's, uh, it's my rules and I like the sound. So what are you gonna do about it? You can't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Smells like almond. I'm not gonna lie to you, it tastes like almond. <laughs> um, I love it. I, I, I'm a big fan of almond champagne, particularly this one, like I said, because I've been to this vineyard. It's way less effervescent than the other one, but it pretty much is overwhelmingly an almond flavor. This is awesome in mimosas because you have the orange juice and the almond, but it's also really, really great by itself. It's a lot sweeter. Um, then the other one, which was a lot more dry. While I was actually at this winery, they do a specialty cocktail, I guess you'd call it. They make their own chocolate shot glasses. They fill it all the way up with their chocolate port, which is very good, by the way. You drink half of it down, then they fill it the rest of the way up with the almond champagne. So you have almond champagne, chocolate port, and a chocolate shot glass, five bucks, and it's wonderful. So if you ever make it to Temecula, definitely do the chocolate shot glass. It's really good. <laughs> or make it at home, you could make it. Okay, so for our wine under nine today, we have Andre, again, champagne from California, the whole loophole thing again. I'm sure you guys have all had it. You've all tried something similar at least. It's like $4 a bottle or Something. So I decided instead of trying it by itself that we were gonna do something really interesting that I saw on Pinterest. Any of you obsessed? I am. So I've made some champagne jello shots. I'm sure we've all also made jello shots, but never with champagne. So basically I took champagne. Uh, I found this really cool jello that is like add your flavor jello mix, I guess. So I actually used 100% white grape juice to make the original flavor, okay? So we have grape juice, champagne, jello mix, and pop rocks. Dun, dun, dun. You wanna add the pop rocks last or they'll get all popped out, okay? So, all right, so we're gonna add them last. I'm gonna kinda sprinkle them over as many of these as I can get to here. Ah, you can hear it already, they're popping. This is why you wanna do it last minute because they'll, they'll get all popped out, right? Oh my God. Holy mackerel. We have an explosion, my pop rock explosion over here, it's crazy. All right, uh, uh, I see you fast, I see you fast. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> That's awesome. Although I think it just went up my nose. <laughs> okay, well. You can't do this without the pop rocks. I tried them without the Pop Rocks, full disclosure. And they're a little bit sour, but the Pop Rocks add a really nice sweetness to it. They're very fun, it's a party trick. Perfect for New Year's Eve. Perfect way to use an inexpensive champagne or any leftover champagne that you might have after your party. You can make these the next day. It might be good for a hangover. I don't know, you can give it a shot. Um, they're still popping. I don't know if you guys can hear this, it's amazing. I'm gonna do another one. It's a party. It's not, oh God. Maybe you should put them in cups. Less messy. 
Thanks for watching the New Year's Eve special of Real Wine. I promise we're back this time, guys. We're not gonna let another 10 months go by before posting another video. Please let me know what you thought, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, and as always, if you make a wine that you'd like us to feature, send me a message. Well, I guess I'll see you guys in 2013. Ci vediamo un'altra volta. Drink up.